Hi, in this video of the listing components in pages subseries, we're going to look at how to use GraphQL to create a listing page with search. So as we said, we've seen how to create basic listings using content resolvers. We've seen how to create our own custom implementation of a content resolver that actually uses SXA query items. And finally, we're going to look at the GraphQL feature, which is the most extensive and probably the most feature full capability to create listing pages or complete listing pages that support filtering and search and so on and so forth. Before we get started, I have to recommend two great learnings. So Anastasia's uh, blog certainly talks a lot about JSS, but also her sample sandbox solution from this GitHub has great scenarios for how search can be implemented. I've actually used her work in today's video. So a lot of what we're going to talk about in today's video is actually based on what she's already done in JSS Sandbox. And of course, Adam's uh, blog. Adam is a GraphQL guru, and he has a lot of information about how to use GraphQL. He has a more advanced scenario in his GitHub, which is the JSL GraphQL search. It's a bit more advanced than what Anastasia has done, but again, I'm going to focus with what Anastasia has done because it's just simpler, so it's easier for people to understand how to utilize GraphQL to do their work rather than going into a more advanced scenario, but I do certainly recommend for you to check out both of them. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to start doing is actually showing you what we want to achieve. So this is the final output that we're going to achieve, which shows here all the articles. And if I filter, for example, I say here secondary, it's going to filter anything that has the word secondary in it and so on. So this is quite a simple implementation, but it should show you the full capabilities of using GraphQL. So if we look at this, this is a component called search result. This is another component called search box, and there is a container on top of both of them. Let's actually see that using the React So, as we can see here, we have this search box, this search results, and on top of both of them, they're in a placeholder in this component, which is ultimately our parent component, which is our container, our search container. So the first thing we have to do here is create three components. So we created a search box, a search container, and a search result component, as you can see here. And with these, we need to create their definitions. So again, we're going to have the search box, search container, and search result components. We're going to leave these to the side right now. And then we're going to go to the library and create something called search context because in order to do, have this search across all these different components, we need to have this context that provides ultimately the capabilities that search would provide. So the first thing here that we've done is we created a search context. Again, this is just a copy paste ultimately from what Anastasia has done, but we created a search context. So it's a react.create context called search context. And then we created a class called search provider. This search provider is going to be the parent that has the provider and consumer for search using our context. And it, of course, extends React components. It has a state which ultimately has search results, query, and total count. And will mount will perform search, update search query function, which just sets the state here with query equal to query parse JSON, which takes in data of the search and sets state for search result and total count by mapping search.results.item.map all the child items and get search.total count. And of course, our main function, which is perform search. And of course, our rendering at the end, but we're going to talk about perform search first. So what perform search will do is 
first thing is going to actually get the GraphQL client factory. So it's going to get the endpoint and it's going to set the state or pass in the state. And then it's going to return client.query with variables the query dot this dot state dot query and the query itself is a GraphQL query with this text. So let's see what the GraphQL uh, query is. So it's actually a function, so it's a search function, which takes in a variable, which is defined here, which is the query variable. Again, which is the which comes from this dot state dot query, which is this. And then what it does is it calls search with field equal full path to the location. So I'm telling it now to start searching from the full path of home. So I've set it to sidecore content training series training home, which is ultimately the location of my site home, which is this. But I've also added a star at the end to say that I want to search for everything inside it or under it. And I've defined the template name as article. Now, Anastasia had these as variables as well, but just to make it simpler, I added them directly here. Next, I'm going to actually say that the keyword is query. So it filters with this keyword, which is coming from my variable query. And then the results come as results.items dot item name path url page title which is field name page title title which is field name title publish date which is field name publish date author which is field named author and of course at the end the total count is returned then i parse this json and of course my final function is the render function which actually returns search context of provider with the value of search which comes from this dot state update search query is bound to the update search query perform search is bound to the perform search and of course it passes in this dot props dot children and we close the search context dot provider so this is just a normal search provider next thing i'm going to do is actually start developing my different components so the first one we said was be the search container so the search container will only have a placeholder. So all it's doing is ultimately creating a placeholder where you can put all your search items or search components so that all of them see the same context. So remember, again, when we went to the React developer toolbar, we had this context.provider, which had all the consumers inside of it. So this is what this placeholder will, will contain. So this is our placeholder here. Okay, and let's go to its actual definition. So I'll go to components and search container index. And as you can see, all it has is the search provider with this placeholder that we've defined and provided its name here. And the rendering equal props.rendering. And you can see that we got the search provider from our context. So again, let's go back just to make sure that everyone fully understands the steps you need to do. So within the library, we have the search context, which had a class called search provider. And this is the class we're actually using here. So we're importing it. We're importing placeholder from PsychOrgeSS and React, of course, from React. And the search container props passes in to the placeholder, the props dot rendering, which is ultimately what's coming from our props dot rendering. Now, that's the first step. The second step is actually to create the search box and to create the search results. So let's first look at the search results. So again, let's open up its definition first. So search results. As you can see, it doesn't have any fields because I don't need any fields in the search results itself. All I need is in the actual search results HTML itself or the index.js. 
So what we've done here is we've defined the search results. And the first thing we told it is that it's a consumer of the search context. And then within that, we're saying that the context dot search dot search results dot map each item so that we can display them. So again, let's go back to the search context because this is just really important. You can see here that our GraphQL will return the search dot results dot items. Hence, this is why when we defined it here, we defined it as context dot search dot search results and then we map the items each item with its author content and title that are coming back so far this is very easy and this will result in providing a list of items like if we actually refresh this page without using the search at all you can see all the list is being returned because this is what the search result is doing now, the second part we want to do is the search box again. So once we go into the search box, so again, we go to the definition first. So it only has a field called heading, which just shows single line text. I'm not sure even if I'm using that or not. And then if we go to the search box itself, you can see it has a number of functions, which we're going to discuss later, but it has the function render, which takes this dot props as fields and then again it's a search context consumer and the context is being passed and it just has an input of type text so that's the actual search box its value is context.search.query so it's reading from the context the query and it's bound so on change it handles input change on key press it invokes the handle input key press so let's see these here, so you can see here, handle input key press. What this does is it invokes perform search and handle search click perform search and handle input change actually invokes the update search query function. So you can see here are all the definitions that actually get invoked. So it's actually invoking the functions that we've seen earlier in our search context. So here. Update search query and perform search, which are being invoked as we've seen from the search box target here. Now, the second thing we've done, of course, here is we've defined the constructor for our search box class, and we've bound all these different events that actually occur. Once we've done all that, we will be able to add a search container like this. So let's actually create a new one. So I'll just create probably an app route. We'll call it search training. I don't care what its name is. And within that, first thing I'm going to do is actually create or add a search container. Just save. And inside the search container, we're going to have the placeholder. And I'm going to add in that placeholder our different components so our search results and save and as you can see it showed me the list of items here I'll go up again and I'll add my search box let's let me see this search box and I'll add that and save. I'll preview it just to show you how easy it is. Preview. And again, let's filter by secondary. And there you have it. So you can see how easy it is to create a GraphQL based implementation. And the great thing about this is it's really very flexible because 
you have a lot of capabilities you can do with GraphQL and because you're reutilizing the search context or that context and you're able to change it you can do a lot with this now one thing you might think about is actually passing the GraphQL query as well as part of the parameters so that it becomes a bit more generic but in our scenario we just want to do something that's very simple just to show you the capabilities thank you for watching and this is the final video of the search subseries we're going to continue on with other capabilities in JSS for example we're going to look at how do we do personalization uh, how to do forms and the next video we're going to talk about how JSS utilizes a lot of the SXA capabilities so we're just going to see these capabilities and in action and how they've been utilized by JSS thanks for watching